So in this video, we will be talking about how to take those balanced chemical equations that we looked at from the last video and apply them to start to do some qualitative and quantitative calculations of reactants, products, and being able to predict how much of each we need and how much we should produce if we have a given amount of solid. So all of this quantitative stuff can be summed up in one term, and that term is stoichiometry. Now stoichiometry has its roots in something called the law of conservation of mass. And what the law of conservation of mass states is that the sum of all the masses of the reactants, what we start a reaction with, is going to be equal to the sum of the masses of all of the products, what we end with. Now, there's an assumption in there. The assumption is that all of our reactants react and that there's nothing left over and they all turn into the products that we're looking for. But assuming all of that is true, then the law of conservation of mass is a powerful tool because what it tells us is if we know how much we start with, we're going to know how much we end with. We just know that the, the stuff is going to reconfigure and reconvert along the way. Now, stoichiometry is the quantitative way that we go about doing these calculations. And in order to do stoichiometry, we have to have balanced chemical equations with appropriate coefficients. So what kinds of calculations are we talking about here? Well, some of these calculations are going to look familiar to us. Things like molar masses or using Avogadro's number to figure out the number of particles of something. Both of those we've talked about. We have those roots already. We talked about that stuff back when we talked about moles and empirical formulas and mass percentages. So we've done all of that stuff. We know that we can get all of that information from the periodic table. The part that we haven't looked at yet is this idea of mole ratio. And the mole ratio comes directly from a balanced chemical equation. So right there, if we know what our balanced chemical equation is, we can figure out the mole ratio. We just have to do kind of exactly what we were doing before when we did mole calculations. But now we just have to extend it. So if this looks familiar to you, this map concept, we looked at a similar map concept in our second unit. Only instead of looking at it from the standpoint of this, we looked at really just half of this map. So we were interested in going between grams of a substance and moles of a substance, moles of a substance and particles of a substance, particles of a substance to grams of a substance if we went through moles first. We did all of that stuff in chapter two when we introduced the mole concept, when we did our uh, empirical formulas and that kind of thing. The primary difference between those calculations that we did in chapter two and the calculations that we're being asked to do now is we are going to be able to tie together moles of a particular substance to moles of another substance if we use the balanced equation. And so that's where stoichiometry sets itself apart as being different than the kinds of molar calculations that we are doing in chapter two. That said, other than that one small difference, everything else is pretty much the same. The approach is the same. We're going to use dimensional analysis. We're going to use our factor label and unit conversion canceling methodologies to uh, set us up. And we're going to go from there. So the concept of this map, the map here is used to help us to organize our thoughts, organize our calculations so that we know where we are, where we're going, and what kinds of conversions that we need to get there and to go in between. So let's take a look at an example problem. 
Here we know that 13.33 grams of aluminum are burned in excess oxygen. The question is, what is the mass of aluminum oxide that is formed as a result of this reaction? Now, there are multiple parts to this, but the main idea is something relatively simple. We know that we have a mass of aluminum. That mass of aluminum is 13.33 grams. We also know that we want to go to mass of aluminum oxide. Now, I can't go directly from mass of one thing to mass of the other. I don't have a pathway on the map that allows me to do that. But what I can do is I can see that I can go from mass of aluminum to moles of aluminum. I can go from moles of aluminum to moles of aluminum oxide. And then finally, I can go from moles of aluminum oxide to, mole, to mass grams of aluminum oxide. All I need to do is follow the map. And so my process here is going to be relatively simple. The first thing I'm going to do is convert the mass of aluminum into moles. For that, I'm going to need the molar mass of aluminum. The second step is going to be to take the moles of aluminum and convert it into moles of aluminum oxide. For that, I'll need a balanced chemical equation. And then finally, I'm going to convert the moles of aluminum oxide into grams. And once again, I'm going to need a molar mass for that. Now, for each of these three conversions, I'm going to use dimensional analysis to make the appropriate conversions to cancel all the incorrect units. The other thing I'm going to make sure that I do is I want to make sure I do all of my calculation steps at once. I don't want to calculate the moles, hit enter, round it off, turn the moles of aluminum into moles of aluminum oxide, round it off, and then turn the moles of aluminum oxide to grams and round it off again. Every time I round, I introduce more error. Every time I introduce more error, I introduce a lower likelihood of actually getting the question right. So there is a little bit of finesse to this. But if I can do all of that, I'll be able to do what I need to do. And I'll be able to get the correct answer. So let's go back to this original. And in this original question, I have 13.33 grams of aluminum in excess oxygen. Now, before I get into any of the calculations, I need a balanced chemical equation. And so for that, I need to recognize I've got aluminum reacting with oxygen to make aluminum oxide, Al2O3. Now, to balance this equation, I'm going to need two of those, four of those, and three of those. So now I've got a balanced chemical equation. Now I can start moving. And I'm going to start with my given information, 13.33 grams of aluminum. Now we're going to take that 13.33 grams, multiply it, by a fraction, and the fraction that we're going to be looking at is the molar mass of aluminum. Molar mass of aluminum is 26.98 grams per mole. Now that I have moles of aluminum, I'm going to convert it to moles of aluminum oxide. For that, I need the molar mole ratio comes from that balanced equation, two moles of aluminum oxide for every four moles of aluminum. And then the last step, I need to convert the moles of aluminum oxide into grams. One mole of aluminum oxide is 
0.96 grams. And so if I take that all the way through, so I'm just going to write in these fraction bars here. The answer 13.33 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 101.96 divided by 26.98 divided by 4 to 4 significant figures I get 25.19 grams of aluminum oxide. And so that would be my anticipated mass of aluminum oxide from this reaction. Now let's do one more example before the end of this video. How much carbon dioxide enters the atmosphere annually from the combustion of 6.8 times 10 to the 12 kilograms of carbon? Okay, a lot to unpack here, but I've got a balanced chemical equation and I can kind of follow the same process. I have a mass of carbon. I want to turn it into an amount of carbon dioxide. Now, it doesn't tell us that we have to turn this into grams. Um, we will, but that it, it doesn't say we could, we could turn this into moles or anything if it doesn't specify. So if I start 6.8 times 10 to the 12th, kilograms of carbon. Now, first thing I need to do, I need to convert that carbon into grams so that I can use the molar mass. One kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. The next thing is one mole of carbon is 12.01 grams of carbon. And then using the balanced chemical equation, one mole of carbon, di carbon dioxide for one mole of carbon atoms. And then the last step would be to convert it to grams using the molar mass, 44.01 grams of carbon dioxide in one mole of carbon dioxide put in my bars here real quick. Get out my calculator again. 6.8 times 10 to the 12th multiplied by 1000 multiplied by 44.01 divided by 12.01 I get 2.5, um, two six figs here because we only started with two, 2.5 times 10 to the 16 grams of carbon dioxide. So if you follow the process, this is really a relatively straightforward set of calculations. There isn't a whole lot here that you don't know how to do other than this little wrinkle where we added the balanced chemical equation piece to this. Now, if you want some more practice, I'm going to throw it over to uh, a number of other great videos that are already on YouTube, and I'm going to link to them in the description. I'm going to put some um, bars up here for you as well um, so that you can find them. Have a great afternoon.